I will die upstairs in my bedroom that I share with my husband, um, with my mother and my husband by my side, and pass peacefully with some music that I like in the background. I can't even tell you the amount of relief that it provides me to know that I don't have to die the way that it's been described to me that my brain tumor would take me on its own. I hope to enjoy that is however many days 29 year old Brittany Maynard. In the spring, the newlywed learned she has terminal brain cancer. After careful assessment of her prognosis and end of life choices, she made the heart wrenching decision to end her life by prescribed medication if the pain and suffering become too severe. To do so, she and her family moved to Oregon. That's one of five states where death with dignity is an option. Seven other states are debating similar laws. It is a story that has moved millions to share online Brittany's devastating diagnosis and her choice to end things on her own terms. Joining me now via Skype is Chris Hines. He is a husband, a father of four, and he was also given a painful news that he has a severe brain tumor. Chris, good morning to you. And first and foremost, I really just want to thank you for being here and sharing your story. I know it can't be easy. And, and also importantly, diagnosis is different from person to person. So what did doctors tell you about your diagnosis? Uh, certainly, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Um, I was told that I had a uh, brain stem glioma, which is a, a uncommon tumor for an adult to get. It's a pediatric tumor uh, wrapped around my brain stem, um, diffuse, meaning it's not a solid mass. So it was inoperable, couldn't be biopsied, but in all likelihood it would be terminal. But there's very, very little note about them. And I would imagine when you heard Brittany's story, it, it no doubt hit home. But I have to say, no one can really imagine what kind of decision you would have to make unless you're in those shoes. What did you think about her decision? Well, first, let me say, I mean, I think she has the right to make this decision. I think she should have the right. Um, and even though we have similar diagnoses, like you said, um, everyone's different. So I really can't, I can't speak for her in her shoes. However, for myself, I can't see making that decision. Um, it's not a decision that I, I think I could make or I would make, but I think she should have the right to make that decision. You know, something that touched me that you said was the fact is for me, there's a tomorrow. For my wife and kids, there are many, many tomorrows. It really, it, Chris, honestly, it really touched me the way that you worded that. Yeah, I, for me, I, while my condition is most likely terminal, um, I know that I, I at least have tomorrow and the next day, but it'd be really easy to live each day kind of going out with a blaze of glory, you know, spend a lot of money or make poor choices. If I look at it as though I, I don't have a, a future, that's not great for my family. So uh, I try to live each day remembering that, you know, if, if I if I do succumb to this disease, that they'll go on and what I choose to do tomorrow will affect them the day after that and long after I'm gone. You know, I think something that's really striking about Brittany sharing her story and the way I feel when you share your story is it really says something about living your life for the moment, for, for the day, uh, the, for what you have in that moment. Do you appreciate that more than ever now? I certainly do. Um, I still work full time, but I find that I'm, I'm, I work over less. Um, every day I try to spend as much time with my kids as possible. That's quality time. I let them know that I love them. Um, it, it does, it gives you a, a good outlook on life in a lot of ways. And you know, Make sure you, you don't waste any time. Yeah, and, and I'm sure I'm soaking in every single moment that you have with those few, four beautiful children and that wife, uh, I would imagine, is precious. You know, Brittany described why she shared her story, and it has been shared over and over again all over. And it was really about the death with dignity choice and that it is only an option in five different states. Um, have you learned more about that? And were you surprised that that was only available in five states? Uh, when I read her story, I actually went out and, and read some of the background of the Oregon law, went to the Oregon website and, and read about uh, the qualifications and, and just try to educate myself on it. I'm actually, I'm not surprised that it's it's not more prevalent just because it's um, not a very popular theme in society, I don't think, in this country. But um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad that's available to her there. I, yes. Yeah, well, Chris, I just want to thank you for coming on, sharing your story, sharing uh, your family with us. We do appreciate it. Chris Hines, you take care and we wish you all the best.
Thanks very much.